Okay. Welcome to Winter on Wednesdays. This is my rolling assembly table that I'm gonna use to assemble parts on the Marble Machine X. And I want this welding surface smaller. I want it over here so I can weld on metal here and assemble on MDF here. Let's do it. To make the Marble Machine X portable for the world tour, we have designed it in five different big sections. And these sections are starting to become too heavy for me to handle them by myself. To be able to move on with assembly, I built this ceiling crane. And here you can see me lift the top sub-assembly of the Marble Machine X so I can reach the mid sub-assembly because it's the middle sub-assembly that we will be working on today. This reminds me of the Kate Bell scene in Harry Potter. So the crane is hanging and I want to show you something really cool that we've been working on in the computer with the new project manager Chris, the PBS product breakdown structure system. This is crazy, crazy good for the project. Let's have a look. So what you see over here is an Excel sheet that we partly have exported from Fusion 360 using the Bomber application and a lot of manual work as well. Every single part of the Marble Machine X is mentioned in here. From this whole list, we can do a lot of analytics. This is how Chris works. So we can see that right now, the Marble Machine X has 3047 parts and designed parts that we have to make ourselves is 1300 different parts and 2000 parts from off the shelf hardware. You can see the overall progress 45% this is very you should take this number very lightly and Here you can see that this is the assembly we're gonna work on today the mid assembly that has a 69% completion I asked Chris if he thought that this was procrastination or over ambitious and if it's crazy and he said are you crazy? No one makes a complex machine with 5,000 individual parts without making this. What this ensures is that anyone will be able to build a Marble Machine X. This is really turning the Marble Machine X into a product rather than a DIY one-off making project. Okay, so let's look at these gears. Here, 270. So then I'm gonna show you where we can find the parts for the 270 sub-assembly. 270000. These are all the screws and the bearing plates and the three gears. Maybe a lot of you think this is way overkill, but actually Chris, when he came here, he was so surprised about the complexity of the machine and the overwhelmness have been such a bottleneck of the whole project. And for the first time I feel I know what I have to do and I know my next task. We can have any company build a marble machine perfectly according to the CAD drawings together with the PBS easily. So what we're actually doing is taking this DIY making one-off project and making a serious product of it. So I think this work with the PBS is consolidating the big amount of effort I put into this project and that's what makes me so happy about it. If this thing burns down today, it's quite easy to build a new one actually. This whole project becomes much less vulnerable thanks to the PBS. Cheers! So, we have our 270 assembled. We can go to our 270, 32 teeth planet gear assembly, and we can change. We have assembled the plywood part, we have assembled the three bearing plate parts, we have assembled the three 6204 RS bearings. That means we can change the assembly to an A, which is just so rewarding. <laughs> it's like a little gift for me. When I've done something, I can put an A here. 
Let's go over to the analytics and see. We went from 69% to 71%. And the overall progress didn't move. <laughs> what should we do next? So the 230. Let's go to Fusion. So this is the 230. And these are the parts we're gonna assemble next. Let's go and see if we have those parts in the shelves over to the left there. Well, 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 look at these beauties. So these beauties are made by Alex, who is a team member of the MMX team and also runs the YouTube channel Alex CNC and Alex CNC EN. Wow, what a precision. tap these holes with M8 thread and the holes in these are oversized so we will be able to slide around and by doing that we can depth the gears. See how long time it takes to tap these five M8 threads without rushing so much that we're breaking the tap. Okay, bad idea to try to rush things. <sighs> Let's see how long time it takes to tap these five M8 threads without rushing so much that we're breaking the tap. So fucking patient. This was my only real nice tap. So now I have to use shitty ones for the rest of this frame, which will cost a lot of time. Now oh, this takes 100 years in comparison. <sighs> Now I have actually 17 more to do if I do these two with a shitty tap. So this is a bearing housing made also by Alex CNC from the MMX team and it's just magnificent. So here's the M8 threads that I just cut and the holes of the bearing housing are oversized. To quote one of my favorite YouTubers, Jeremy Schmidt, he says, if you can't make it perfect, at least make it adjustable. And that's what we've done here. So by having these holes oversized, we can depth the whole programming wheel gear by moving the bearing housing around. Alex, well done on these parts. So cool. So 
the drill bit was sharp and I used some finishing passes and you get this nice cut finish. Any guess on why I cut the three circles in the middle? I discovered a problem here. This looks fine, but as soon as I clamp here, the gear breaks. That's not how it's supposed to work. This bearing plate is too thick. It touches this spacer. And I checked in the CAD and I've actually redesigned this to be two millimeter thin and now it's four millimeter thick. I machined the pockets to exactly two millimeter deep and the idea was to sand away until the sander started to take off plywood material. Then the rings should have been exactly two millimeter thin. This didn't work because the belt sander doesn't remove material that fast. So I went over to the disc sander and after a while I got them quite close. I chamfered the inner edge for some extra space and then I could put the plates back on the gears and try if it worked. I think the steampunk look is really completed by this shitty bearing retaining plate. On the machine you don't even see this plate, so enjoy it now while you can. Okay, so now we're gonna see if this worked. Now if I put pressure on this, it should spin freely. Yes, we fixed it. So here I'm preparing to mount the sun gear. I'm putting some precision pipe spacers on and then some temporary plywood spacer that goes over the keyway and the sun gear itself. Then I can try to mount the programming wheel shaft into the bearing housing that we mounted earlier. You can see it coming through right there. And the top assembly was a little bit in my way so I put it a little bit higher. And I realized that those brackets in the back were obstructing the teeth of the programming gear. So I grinded off some of the brackets to make some clearance and then I could mount the piece for real. And this is a right side bearing housing. Another magnificent part by Alex that I had to tap, which felt like I was butchering his precision work with my sloppy tapping, but it worked. I tried to make it. I was I was more I was more careful with Alex pieces than I ever been with my own pieces so that's good. So now we're on the right side of the programming wheel. I put some spacers and then the bearing housing. It's so cool these aluminium parts. I really love them. I dropped my guitar on the floor. I need to glue the neck. Sometimes my mind plays tricks on me. So now I could go on and mount the right side frame and this was just so satisfying to see these parts finally go together. I've been staring at them in CAD for so long time and seeing them in real life it was fantastic. So this is the big timing belt pulley with 40 teeth and on it goes a timing belt that goes down and meets smaller timing belt pulley on the crankshaft there that has 20 teeth. So we have a one to two gear reduction on, on that connection. So I could lower the top assembly down onto the programming wheel. 
from the crane. The crane is really working nice here. When I communicated that I wanted to hire a project manager, I wrote that the person probably needs to love Excel sheets, <laughs> and I didn't know how right I was. Chris is like the god of Excel. He programs websites using Excel only. <laughs> the PBS makes me feel like I'm in control over the project rather than the project is controlling me like it was before. I'm not wasting time on being completely overwhelmed anymore and for example I could put a little bit more time into editing this video because I knew I could afford it because of the task lists from the PBS. In the spring, the Vintergatan YouTube channel was part of the beta test of the sponsorships function. YouTube has now launched it and renamed it into Memberships. We made these badges that turns up next to your comment in the commentary field on YouTube. So for new members, you get the sketch badge. For members for over a year, you get the plywood badge. Plywood is, of course, worth more than metal in <laughs> my hierarchy here. And if you've been a member for two years, you get Wilson. It's like the final boss badge. I also really want to thank all the Wintergatan Patreons that have taken the leap of faith to support a rewardless Patreon. This kind of support makes me able to bring in more help and more people into the team around the Marble Machine X and that has really turned things around for me. I've been feeling much happier the last weeks when I've been feeling in control. It feels like you sent me the angel of Excel in the form of Chris and he has blessed me. Tomorrow I'm going to make my breakfast according to a PBS structure he gave to me. I asked him like, isn't this a little bit over ambitious? And he said, are you crazy? No one makes breakfast without a proper PBS structure. I mean, you're not even awake at that point. How are you going to be able to know how to assemble your breakfast? And I was like, that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna grab my 200 000 and go make some 200 001. And it's been a pleasure. This is going to be continued. Thank you everyone for watching and see you on the next Vintage on Wednesday. <laughs>